All right. So, hello, yeah. everyone, and welcome to another installment of our uh, still unnamed podcast, I think. Though it's officially but, um, labeled CG Talks anyway. Oh, but okay. So, it's it, it, it's it's an official, it's still play around. Label. Yeah, but, yeah, okay. So, so uh, for now, yeah, like it, it's CG Talks. So, uh, you're welcome again. And I guess um, if you listen to the last episode, uh, we're we're trying to do this thing where we kind of cover some interesting news, and then we get to the to the sweet the sweet little the things. As we, yeah, the sweet spots later on. So, I think in the interest of, I don't know what you guys think. I think that maybe this time around, let's just come up. Let's just let's just kind of uh, go over our like the the bits of news that we have that. And then and then go into our main topic today, which I think is, uh, which is kit bashing. Um, right, right. So I guess uh, that kind of like applies to the to the name creation of the podcast that we can we, we, we might kind of like creatively use this idea of kit bashing for making the name uh, once we get enough, you know, assets, meaning the episodes, and then we'll extract some parts of it and just you know. Yeah. We'll just, well, I, we'll do something so, out of it, you know, and some crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think that this. So you were mentioning earlier before the recording uh, started that, uh, yeah, like you looked up the the, the origin of of kit batching, which I think is a pretty cool. Um, I think it's a pretty cool uh, sort of topic to talk about. Like, I think if you are, um, if you're into three D. Um, you must have at some point. No, I don't know. I mean, I think that almost everyone at a certain time, uh, like I, like to up to a certain generation, maybe like had this sort of uh, kind of habit of like had a kind of um, had that experience. Like like if you've played with Lego, you could argue that in a way, you know that that sort of is like taking different components sometimes already pre-made and then sort of just combining them to create something ridiculous um like uh like a helicopter with spider legs or yeah. something like that you know and or yeah. or like you had these figurines that you kind of broke apart and then super glued together to create this mutant i don't know like sort of beholder creature or whatever everyone's got this this no, Frankenstein gene. Inside. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, sort of like a Doctor Frankenstein. It lives. It <laughs> right. Lives. So, so let's let's make uh, some things clear at first. So like. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. About this kid bashing that you, yeah. you you shouldn't really mistake this with kid bashing. You know this this oh, is yeah. a totally oh different God. topic, and we're not going to do that was, that, into you know the socially. Yeah, we will need controversial talk topics. Yeah. Yeah. Or or participate in. Right, like so, n- nobody. So we're also we're, we're talking about anyone, this good thing, you know, kit yeah. bashing. Kit and and bashing. and uh, and we're also not referring to like if your name is Kit, you know, that don't worry, that's that's not what we mean either. We're not <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to. You know what? I think DJ, like maybe you should go ahead and and uh, regale us with the official Wikipedia definition of kit right. bashing. Or, or just your definition, you know, based <laughs> on what you said. It's yeah, up maybe, to you. Maybe, well, I thought about maybe reading this, but but I guess we'll, we'll just leave that pre- pleasure to you. Uh, so maybe we'll leave a link in the description so that you can find yourself or you can use the great, you know, helper of everyone today of getting knowledge, like it's the Google. <laughs> so you can just uh, check the kid bashing uh, Wikipedia definition, which, which really goes into interesting, interesting uh stuff like it's uh, like we all probably know this term from the cgi business but this really refers to something kind of real reality based so like the old-fashioned models that you glued together <laughs> with actual glue and uh, yeah the the things that were used uh, in cinema so long time ago you no know, long time ago in a galaxy far away for example like in the old, the old original series of uh, of Star Wars, where you didn't have the whole CG machine going, and you you had to had to really make these 
starships, you know, and stuff like that. And even before that, in the in the great Kubrick's uh, Space Odyssey, for example, you know, this whole space station, it, it used a lot of you know small models created in scale, and the kit bashing really comes from from this area, like using <clears throat> kits of of other things like uh, other models just to and also i think mash custom- it up together and create something totally different so something else yeah. also c- customizing yeah. the 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 models of uh, this railroad sets there were two of them like two different scales at least and you could buy them the electric electric uh, sets of uh, railroad railroad i don't know the the trains and uh, some guys, not kids, you know, like adult ones are into it very much. And they also created a custom, uh, custom version of some of the, for example, uh, some of the um, trains of, 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 or, or, or some elements. So they would uh, build their... Uh, I don't remember how. What is the name of for this, this this first this first part of the train? Uh, it's. Uh, um, um, oh geez, yeah, I wouldn't know, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so, so basically, it was also that, there. Yeah, okay. It was also there because uh, yeah, because because they were very much devoted to the to the uh, to this uh, reality and i think that another thing i watched a lot of at, at some point in my city there was a shop where you could buy a lot of models and there were there were dioramas of second world war uh, battles and there, there was a lot of kit bashing there too because they were not just put together from uh, ready uh, uh, sets to buy these guys were um, modeling and creating elements of, of I don't know like um, anything that can be used to be something else in that scale to that they created these dioramas so so that would be another one and also um, I, at some point I was into you know, Warhammer and Games yeah, Workshop. Just, just wanted to mention sure. that. It's like, let's get let's get sentimental here. You know, so, where's your? Uh-huh. F- when was no, your no, first just... kid bash model? Oh yeah, um, I don't remember. I was, I I played a game called Necromunda, and it's released again. Uh, it was Games Workshop game. It was like under under. Uh, some some like post-apocalyptic uh, universe which uh, which is under the earth and you play with gangs which fight against each other and that was a like war tabletop war uh, tabletop uh, war game similar to to Warhammer or Warhammer forty thousand. Damn, but... that sounds cool. I... Yeah, we had that. yeah, it was cool because it was cool because for for me and for for my brother and my friends because um, you didn't have to buy a lot of figures. Uh, uh, you just had could have a gang from 10, 10 guys and that's enough. And you didn't have to build this huge army which we couldn't afford. We we lived in Poland, and <laughs> and yeah, you know, it's like no, you, but every yeah, those are just. Notoriously expensive. Just gotta say, Warhammer figures, even like I like, they're expensive everywhere. Yeah, but uh, let's say that in Poland, uh, like in nineties, you would earn oh, right, right, ten percent money of 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 everything was like from from abroad was like five times more expensive, and and you know the, the to paint it. So yeah, and and we did some kit bashing because. Uh, also, we didn't have money, but we had like figures from other systems or some completely other places, so we could like, uh, you know, cut a hand of one of the guys and glue it to another guy, and that would be this kind of fighter. So, and a lot of kit bashing when it comes to the environment. So you could buy uh, parts of the environment of this this under underground 
hive it was called and it was like it was like some kind of industrial industrial labyrinth so yeah so i remember we were kid bashing we were basically um looking for any kind of broken electronics uh because you could open it and you had so many elements which you could glue to for example like uh paper paper uh, square glue it spray it with like silver spray and paint it here and there and you had like another another wall for this game so we just hunted for broken radios especially those older ones because they had the coolest elements inside there was no electronics like this no uh, microelectronics <laughs> the, the, were... the birth of the transistor punk <laughs> yeah exactly this kind yeah. of stuff it had uh, the transistors and resistors and a lot of the a lot of this stuff so you just would take this uh, special um, special scissors for cutting the wire and you cut out everything or you just took the whole plate and put somewhere and it fantastically looked like some kind of uh, uh, broken industrial industrial place. So we did it. And recently Necromunda got back and I think this is also because of the internet and I I saw some people kid bashing like creating custom gangsters from this from this uh, from this game and it just blew my mind what they are I mean these guys are really I mean sometimes one of the guys like put a figure of some kind of koala bear so it was you know like koala bear yeah and and it was like for kids, like some, or I don't know, you like from, from some five year old kids for some game or I don't know, stuff you buy for very little kids. And he took that ko- koala bear, he added him this and that, he painted him in a different way. And now he's, this is like a beast from Underhive. Who who fights and this is like the, one of the character he, uh-huh. he uses in the game and it was completely not meant to. Be, it was like a cute cute figurine of of a koala. So they people do fantastic stuff. There's also a lot of uh, resources online now. How to paint? How to how to prepare something like that? When I was starting, it was like uh, not 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 much. Uh, not much wisdom uh, it was not very uh, easy to find nice. so i i meant all these things as a, like a as a ground where the kid bashing was a thing and why people did it like it's the things i remember uh, when they started right uh, and the thing you mentioned like this koala bear uh, getting into a kind of like a sci-fi character or something like that you you get that in the blockbusters right now like the guardians of galaxy with this you know animal creature is <laughs> or something like that like or, or the Groot you know stuff like that just <laughs> yeah it's, oh, it's still around it's still around just the tools changed yeah somewhat. i just want to go off on a very quick tangent yeah. i just found out like interesting trivia recently that um apparently Raccoons are one of the prime candidates for like other uh, animal species that that could have, with the right sort of uh, under the right conditions, could have um, evolved to be sort of to sort of have a level of consciousness that we that we do or something close. So, I mean, like rocket raccoon isn't entirely. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they based that character off of that fact, actually. Oh, well, but... and, you, and if you think about koala bears, they are chewing the, that strange weed or, or something like yeah. that. So, no, they were vegan something... before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just turning into, <laughs> something, turning into something unnatural, at least in your own consciousness, while you're a koala bear, it's probably to be expected to some extent. <laughs> no, yeah, I but mean, the mean, mean that they're, they're kind of like on high all the time, something like that. Raccoons uh, are smart. So probably. 
like, yeah. like rats. Right, and the and the uh, you mentioned you mentioned the old game getting back. So another news that I came up this week was Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two are being remade and no way. returning returning this autumn. Yeah, and I've seen it officially on some uh, also Jablinsk game gaming or something like that. You know the Jack Black YouTube channel. And he was hanging out with Tony Hawk, and they were mentioning it. The return of the legend. Oh, that's wild. That's a, yeah, that's a pretty good, like, that's a really good franchise, I think, that it, uh, I mean, like, I'm, I'm surprised, actually, that nobody had thought to bring that back after. A... Yeah, yeah, just, you know, refreshing the technology thing and keeping the old game, the game stuff around but speaking about technology <clears throat> the one news that probably broke everybody's mind you know blew every everyone's mind was the epic the epic comeback of epic games with unreal engine 5 demo how are your feelings about oh yeah this? oh that's it's crazy no but and the, and the interesting thing is uh like epic it's not like epic games has been like in the shadows for uh, in the past few years, they've been uh, they've been behind like a lot of really interesting mega grants, right? Like, I think I think the term mega grant is like an Epic Games coined term, but they've been like Blender's gotten a grant, um, Krita uh, has also received a grant. I think like a year ago or two years ago from Epic Games. Like they've been doing that for some time, and then now they. Uh, they they're out with yeah this unreal demo and i'm not sure i don't know are you seeing some kind of correlation here or i'm not sure if like it's just it, i guess all i'm saying is just they they've been they've been doing pretty interesting things and then now like suddenly they're like i'm i'm very curious i'm i'm curious as to sort of what uh you know it's like like where are they going like Unreal Engine is very, um, it's it plays very well, right? With with almost every software, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, and it's they're they're clearly a. Uh, it's like they're trying setting, to build. Setting, yes, trying to build a full full blown, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't know, ecosystem for creating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. It's generally yeah, it's games, of... games, and other kind of like. But also making it very accessible, right? Environment like, creation it, tools. Yeah. Yeah. Live it's almost like VR. I've seen. I've, I've, like heard like, to, yeah. I've heard like. Yeah. I've heard. Sorry. Sorry. I've heard that uh, that uh, their technology is also used in, the, in cinemas right now with this whole problem with shooting on sets and, uh, yeah. Using mm, using like virtual sets based on Unreal. Oh, but like it's so well, it's mean, not yet fully like, fully. Yeah, it's not yet fully replacing the real world, but. I guess the demo shows that we're kind of heading this direction slowly yeah. but steadily. But are but you mean like VFX wise, like they also make use of real time rendering and and not like like I mean, I mean like rendering. creating creating sets for for shows like for for movies and stuff like that. So yeah, instead yeah. of instead of building real world sets, they're using virtual sets. Oh yeah, yeah. For shooting yeah. footage. But I mean so, like uh, uh, you like. Unreal Engine playing a role here as what for previs or? Mm, I mean, for uh, I think it was even used for final shots. You know, for wow, like, for backgrounds and stuff like that. So I think it was the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian series. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Using yeah, right. this, yeah. for example. Like... They, Mandalorian, Mandalorian. They used Unreal Engine to. Yeah, at least, at least that's what I've heard, but I'm not sure. I, I maybe needs checking, but yeah, that's what I've heard. What about uh, about what, just what? just about Unreal Engine? Two little news you can check on Platic Image site. You can check their. Uh, I've seen trailer of their short movie they made in Unreal Engine, so they are checking this this technology. And also on 3D Total, you can check. Uh, season reel of students works in Unreal Engine. So there are also some cool stuff there. Of, of course, not 
this new version, but uh, yeah, it looks like uh, more and more people are um, are checking that and trying because, for example, I I I, I watched this uh, Unreal Engine demo five, and I was oh my god, I was I, I watched it on a very big screen and 4K and this is uh, at some point I had the impression that at this point this tool there was like a moment like it was too much of the of this lighting all that stuff that I thought at this point this tool is powerful and 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 uh, like it gives such a creative freedom that it's all it's it's um, it's an option for very ser serious artists and directors, movie directors. I had like a, this 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 impression how this director or that director would use that tool if he if, if he put his hands on it, because this is not only I mean games are games, but like the the games and movies merged, and um, and I think this is this is. Uh, like when when we are going to w watch a movie made in in such an engine, the the whole movie, or like watch a movie or a show, which has this game traits, uh, in this with this with this reality created in Unreal yeah. Engine. It seems yeah, like I, the the game cinematics are just <laughs> entering the the gaming experience live. Yes. So, yes, it was, I mean, yeah. the, the, the vision of, and by the way, I'm very sorry for the generation of kids which are just bo getting born now, because there was that moment when that character in, in demo, she like flew through, tr flew like through, through the, through these ancient ruins and before that she, 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 uh, she found a huge, some huge uh, temple, and I thought, I mean, going out to 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 the you know um, sandbox and playing with mud or I don't know with plastic toy, this is not going. I mean, this, how can real life compete for a kid with being a, somebody who flies and and <laughs> yeah, you know, and this whole world. I mean, I was really watching that, and I was. Thinking, okay, so I made a conscious decision that I'm not playing computer games anymore. I just don't. And now I'm watching that and I'm thinking, okay, I'm, um, I'm going back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is yeah. no say, say goodbye to real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I, I mean, it was like I studied architecture. So I remember the lessons of uh, history of architecture. So when she went into into this 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 t old tomb, it was like, oh my god, how cool it would be to make the the whole ancient Egypt uh, mm -hmm. setting in that, and and you know you could uh, you could walk around and you could learn about our history of architecture stuff like that. It was Jesus. That was that was huge impression. I mean, but you just you just thought about kind of like a link to a real life scenario, like using this for for recreating an existing spaces, for example. Yeah, so exactly. Like from, or, from museums, yeah. you know, immersive. Yeah, immersive so for example, things you, like that. How how you, like Forum Romanum is like in Rome is is is, is it's uh, there's only like leftovers, but if you could rebuild it in this engine and walk around on Forum Romanum, see how it was like, stuff like that. So or imagine you know just visiting Mars. <laughs> like you know we have yeah. quite quite good photos from, from space of other planets, and so recreating this in this kind of like environment should yeah. be possible as well. So yeah, really, it was like so there are going to be games with that reality and I just got my big TV screen. I bought it after not having TV for like 10 years. So I watched it on this with, with you know, bass sounds and I was thinking, oh my God. So yeah, I will probably, I will probably will look 
will watch trailers and gameplays of games. I think this is a good uh, compromise. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, no, but I don't know, man. That's like, that sounds like the beginning of a long and slippery slope. I found a, because I've been out of that stuff for, for some time also, but then I, I like a few days ago, and this is like, this isn't even uh, like breaking news, you know, but like the, the Diablo 4 uh, like trailer came, like, I saw the the trailer to that, and then like some in-game like gameplay a couple of weekends ago, and oh man, that's all I can say is I'm glad it I'm glad it's not like released. Otherwise, I would have totally lost control. <laughs> but but, it, but it's just it, isn't it's just, it like isn't it like just you know the new the new toy uh, kind of arriving like like the whole story that we had with all other technologies like coming in like. Some people got maybe lost in TV when it came, or or other you know media, new media yeah. appearing, and uh, you know the whole video kill the radio star. Thing. Yeah, for sure. And and still like the radio endured because there are some like we are we're oh. making a podcast right now, right? In the whole and the podcast yeah. podcasts are getting more and more popular, even though everything is like interactive. Uh, I don't know video every every. Every single, you know, sense that you have is being like overloaded, sort of. And people like sometimes want to just, you know, switch off and read a book. Yeah. Really? That's true. But if like if if we got to in the future convert this podcast to some virtual simulation and we each have avatars and I get to be like Yeah, the like avatars this, I don't know, a- a- avatar is kind of, of like a movie that... thing. I, I I'm totally gonna go for that. <laughs> Yeah, but Avatar is kind of no, like a movie kidding. that that came to my mind, like when when this the whole three D cinema thing went in, and everyone was yeah, crazy yeah. about this with the with this whole experience. I was there uh, in Avatar movie, and the, I think it was yeah. the only movie that I really watched uh, with this three D technology, and I really enjoyed it because it was new. And then I came, I went to some movies made in three D, and I kind of like, I was really tired by this. To mm-hmm. an extent, and I really wanted to just watch traditional, regular movies and to not get yeah no so, of, yeah of course like I think uh, I mean that's always yeah, been the recurring because then there you know, there like was a movie that just made the the scenes that were specifically designed for this, like in the Hobbit for example yeah you, know, you had all these you know scenes that were explicitly made to use the technology really and it, it kind of like yeah. didn't fit into the whole cinematic experience but it was just there to just you know bomb your senses with this whole 3d shit yeah so uh, i think it it will kind of like just blend in with all the rest or maybe we'll just get you know kit bashed with all the cyberpunk (laughs) uh stuff on our you know nerves and stuff like that you know cyber I think yeah. that uh, you know there was that moment when uh, they changed the di- direction of lighting uh, in this demo, like in a second from one place to another, and so I thought that yeah, this I mean how how much you can play with lighting or with mood when you, you when it is in real life and the the effect is so realistic, and I thought okay so this is. Uh, it's going to make the learning curve of, of 3D creation much shorter because if you every time if you need to um, you know wait for a render for a test maybe train on some simpler scenarios to know how the lighting works uh, then it takes you more time to learn in 3D when you need to wait for renders even even like I don't know 20 seconds than when you can be a kid and, you know, just take sound and just move it crazily around, whatever comes to your mind, and finally, okay, well, wow, this is this is cool. So yeah. I think this is the artists who are going to be gr- growing with these tools. I think they, at least when it comes to learning, uh, I, think, I think this is going to make the, the, the learning curve much, much shorter. Much faster. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It's letting, at least letting you focus on the real thing, like uh, like yeah. the whole creative process, the the decisions that you make that are really kind of like artistic decisions, not not so much technological decisions. 
I, Which again, I think that's the, that's the, the direction that all whole technology is kind of trying to get to, like making yeah. the UI as seamless as possible, so that you can focus on uh, on the creation process, really, like the whole VR sculpting thing, for example. Or uh, yeah. you know, I've I've just seen a nice video of uh, Key Mesh, a thing that's Pablo de Barro uh, doing for Blender. Oh yeah, yeah. That's another news I wanted to mention and. Uh, it was like based on some stylized characters and creation of you know motion uh, motion of uh, f facial motion uh, you know, expressions isn't of the like face. A, isn't and it like a very elaborate sort of? Um, doesn't it sort of replicate stop motion in a way? Like like to aren't some these extent, like yeah, sort right. of? Uh, those are but those are like um, it's like the mesh, but like in a way it's sort of like shape keys, right? Like it's more instead yeah. of like. Yeah, deforming from yeah, but you just yeah, yeah. you just like uh, sculpt the key poses, sort of. Yeah, yeah. For, me, oh. for me, it looked like uh, like uh, animation. I'm uh, animating play doh. Right, so, right. Yeah, so like claymation. Yeah, claymation. Yeah, yeah claymation. Like mm -hmm. Or like, uh, yeah, and uh, but which, by the way, like going back to what we, what you were mentioning earlier. I mean, yeah, uh, like this, of course, like the spectacle. You know, the 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 grand spectacle of like. Uh, like real time rendering now, or 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 I guess CG in general is like it's 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 great to have, but I don't think I'm sh like I'm sure it it I don't think it will ever sort of make obsolete any other uh, medium of creation. I mean, uh, like when was the last claymation like great claymation movie released? Like I'm not even I haven't been keeping track, but like um, even. Even sort of like uh, the stuff by Leica Studios. I don't know if you guys have seen like films by them. Like they did one with Wes Anderson, and they did another one with, I it think, as a them. Fantastic, Fantastic Mr. Fox, or yeah, yeah, Fantastic yeah. Mr. Fox, and then like there was this other one. Uh, I think it was a, it was about this this kid who, um, who sort of like, uh, yeah, damn. I, Anyway, I, I think I get your point. Like, yeah, the, that uh, you I know, mean, the, the those tool, were the still they still held their own. Like, those are very traditional methods, and right. still, you know, like they, uh, like you, you, you can't really replicate the charm of a of a film like that with. Um, and even if you can, you know, it's sometimes you know the whole process of CGI is like kind of we're we're also excited about the new tools and possibilities. And really, what all that they are trying to do is just like enable the computer to really mimic the real world, a real so, experience, like a so real, yeah. So it kind Actually, of like, like makes things easier, but then it's it's just you, yeah. It's, you could even say you could even say that like the technological development is um, like the the ultimate like the ultimate testament of how sophisticated the tool becomes. Um, or like how evolved a, a tool becomes is when like a like a you know software is when like the interfacing um, is almost unnoticeable. Like when you don't really even uh, like you don't you don't actually feel a hurdle if you having to sort of uh, run your fingers through like these button configurations and a series of clicks to be able to I don't know like pull a shape out of a out of a box, for example, you know. Uh, so, like natural, natural gestures, uh, the same way we would do that in real life, drawing or sculpting or. Yeah. Just, like right, and the, and this whole uh, you uh, Unreal Engine demo kind of like goes this direction, like like uh, bridging the gap between you know sculpting, like ZBrush creation of high poly tool, uh, you know assets and hold the. Little details, and then not having to worry about you know all the topology optimization stuff like that, because the technology is slowly like trying to close this gap that you don't have to really care about the the whole optimization thing. The technology will take care for uh, for that for you, sort of. Yeah, I, I guess that's what, that was pretty exciting. I, I mean, you know, all this high poly models used there and running pretty smoothly, so. Yeah, and I think that, you know, um, the good thing is also, for example, there's that Kitbash 3D um, models repository, and there are fantastic models there, but this is very, it's now very uh, 
restricted. I mean, there's not much, not many of the, of these models online or like like environments. But yeah. this is a thing that is going to grow and it's is going to. I think this is going to, you know, like like once uh, once you do this environment, it's not going to disappear. So right, with and time with, and with the photo scanning thing going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you you can have more. But, but by the way, I just recalled the guys. Do you know the Kwai brothers? Uh, no. Uh, oh, sorry, but uh, sorry, uh, but like, no. But before it's, we get to that, since you mentioned Kit Bash, sorry, I'm just gonna like uh, if you guys haven't uh, um, a, a nice spring sale coming up now, so it's fifty percent off on some kits, and it ends at the end of this month. So um, that's a pretty that's a pretty sweet deal. Like I've, I I I was able to play with a few of their free. Um, sort of, they, they gave away a few free sets, and it's pretty, it's it's good stuff. So I would highly recommend it. That was just a not a plug, but like a piece of news and an honest appreciation of a good service. I think. So yeah. Okay, sorry. That that, that also was also I mean those those kits are fantastic. Just watch just yeah. for the sake of watching them, like the even not downloading or buying. You know, it's. Uh, just this for the sake of watching this stuff and and that this is going to be more of it and now when there's that, de that demo of unreal engine i more understand the idea of such kits because mm -hmm. you can even take one of those and basically do your own game with a very realistic uh uh environment uh basically i don't know Maybe not as a single person, but you don't have, you don't need a huge studio to do that. So, so yeah. yeah. But about Quay Brothers, so these guys were, uh, I think they, they were, for example, creating times of, uh, in times of the MTV. They make some MTV animations. I don't know if you remember that oh, MTV. Man. Have had this MTV animated logo, and a lot of artists would do that. So, I think the guys and, that also made Celebrity Deathmatch, uh, they did Celebrity Deathmatch. Oh, are they? Free, free brothers. I mean, I, no, I'm asking. I, I don't. I don't think this is their style of of thinking. Oh, okay. They were, but I don't know. Maybe I would to check on it. But they made a lot of very strange animations for, and made from. Like, um, like basically, uh, decayed, decayed models, like decayed dolls, parts of dolls, uh, those bo bodies, and they would animate like screws, for example, and you you would watch the screws, uh, like I don't know, dancing around and screwing in and out, trying what they can do, like like they were learning to be screws and all that stuff. Also, they made the, uh, one movie with fantastic pictures. Uh, it was Institute, Institute Benjamenta, I think, as far as, yes, Institute Benjamenta. They, so you can watch it. It was, I remember, I, I watched it with friends and, and, and they said that that was ex, that was a boring movie because it would, you would, you could say that was boring, but you need to check the the image. I mean, how they created the image, and you and you can watch their animation as well. So they were. I thought about these guys because this is so the, like so. There were the guys that, that that created the sober. The sober tool? sober uh, video clip for tool. Oh yeah. Or or is it just like their style? I, I don't know. I would need to check on that. But like you said, that these old techniques uh, are not going away because uh, all these all these uh, all these uh, animations and those figures they have the there are the, a lot of imperfections and they are 
this is this is exactly what 3D doesn't have. So it's this is exactly that thing that it's difficult to achieve in in 3D in CG in general. So sure. yeah, so so I I think that they could make a fantastic use of 3D because they could just animate like uh, several screws and a wire in an interesting way. Like you would watch it like, wow, this is like some magical world somewhere in the in the in the un, under the shelf of books that everything is moving there. But yeah, they wouldn't have this this uh, quality of of decay and and randomness and uh, imperfections. So uh, so this is just my just my loose. Um, um, I just I just recalled them as as we were talking about this this uh, um, th this things we talked and mm -hmm. also I. You know, I thought about this. Um, I mean, the, the the demo, the demo was very cool and very impressive, but it was uh, like very um, uh, conservative <laughs> in terms of what was shown there. And yeah, it was there was a fantastic vision of this this place. But this is like, it's not like I've seen it all. So, so somehow, you know, it's like Indiana Jones and yeah. stuff. Old, exactly. Yeah, mixed but, with, with a little bit of fantasy sci-fi or so. Yes, but for example, you know, every time there's a new technology, at first, at first, people do more of the stuff they did because they can do more because of the technology. So, for example, when there sure, was a, yeah. yeah, yeah, when it was when there was a CG, at first there's like expansion, extensive uh, work. Like we are doing Titanic, we are doing bigger and bigger uh, war scenes and stuff like that. And then at some point, somebody ca come like like uh, Wachowski brothers, and they made uh, Matrix. And Matrix was possible to make years before it was made, but they came to the table and and they decided that they are going to change they're using this technology to do something completely different and new and it's not it's not going to be just multiplication of the old stuff because we can do more it's going to be some new quality because at this point we can like for for like now the 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 bullet time is like a cliche right but yeah uh, but it was the, i think the first time in their movie like this bullet time uh, bullet time uh, scenes, and, yeah, and after that, like Max Payne came out, and I think the term yeah. bullet time came from Max Payne, right? Uh, like, you played? Have you played that yeah. game? Like, yes, yeah. I, I played. Yes, yes, yes. I think yeah. So, so, so with this technology, somebody can come now and make a game, the same game as like like remake of this uh, of, of of a game with better graphics, more detail. Uh, more immersive, uh, which is a very popular word right now. And uh, but at some point, somebody will come and will really show what you can make in this tool that right. wasn't possible to something do. new. Yeah, just just, just came to my mind like uh, about the immersion thing. Uh, there are you know games with super high end graphics right now and. I just recently rediscovered a, a game from my uh, like childhood, well, not childhood, but young, young manhood. Uh, that was called Deliero. It was it was kind of like a, just like you said, the cre a creative punch into what's already been there. Like it, it it's kind of just like the worms, but in real time. And its graphics were just like you know pixelated graphics, nothing nothing really fancy, but the immersion, like the playability was just super rad you know you just sunk into this whole frenzy of killing this these worms with different uh, pixelated ar uh, you know arms and what was yeah. the what was that game name a liero liero, liero. yeah it's 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 like worm worms you know but in real time so you have players playing oh. simultaneously just killing 
each other with, you know, get, getting the pixel blood on the screen. And I've, yeah. I've shown that to my kids and they were also, you know, they have, they have all the new technology running there, but uh, available at their fingertips, but they were really s also sunk into it. So oh, it can, also... that proves that, that, that proves that the idea of really a simple game or like of, of a simple movie sometimes, you know, can sell, yes, can be more impactful than you know all the whole the fireworks of yeah new technology. No, but but I think missing again, the plot yeah yeah but then i think it would it would be the like a more fair way of kind of describing uh, like thinking about technology is like we have to remove it from aesthetic right like uh it the, the fact that 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 for example um let's say like if somebody were to make a game like minecraft uh, like back in the '80s, that's that would basic that would basically be like maybe their uh, you know like uh, that would be triple A back then maybe or or maybe earlier let's say but that would have been the triple A game standard anyway where everything is sort of you know but now you have you have sort of that boxy uh, like eight bit um, aesthetic but like on you know with like crispy textures and whatnot and once but there. but the aesthetic stayed right yeah once there but but the fact so like i think it's great that technology is able to sort of allow people to explore whatever like almost any aesthetic um in a in a in a in a much easier way yeah, and i yeah. think like anybody could make a minecraft model now with a little with a with a few youtube videos and you know, like almost like like and a like with a three D app and a few YouTube videos, you can make a Minecraft character in like a, I don't know, like a few days, right? So I mean that I think that's an amazing, like, it's an interesting sort of uh, time where, where sort of the way like the way the internet was for a lot of things now, like at least in the in the CG industry, it seems like. Mm. Well, at least I wonder, like, what what would specialization? What would that do for specialization now? Like earlier, for a while, we were talking about how, you know, like it's just like you, like kids now can can uh, mess around with software that will allow them to do things um, that would have taken like a lot of dedication and time to do. Like they they can they can do any of any any task that would have been super difficult to do for one person uh for for a given amount of time they can do um in in such with such ease and speed that you know they could basically yeah like you you could be a, you could be a director and create like sort of your entire environment your entire set or whatever and going back to kit bashing you know like it's boolean operations now are just much more sophisticated like you have Remeshing capabilities like uh, the inst like at the very least instant meshes, but then there's Q remesher. Um, it's a program like based on the technology from ZBrush that allows you to kind of re remesh, right? Like your 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 models, or or just you know with ZBrush, like you could uh, or Blender, like you could remesh. You could you could take a car, and then then you could take like uh, I don't know a biped and 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 make some really messed up looking I like hide. transformer for sadists or something and then and then just sort of re you could you could hit a button and then like you could perform a boolean operation on it you could hit the button and then um you would get like maybe not the best topology but clean clean quads you know that you can uh auto unwrap using some other software that's out there and then and then like start texturing um just like that right like not like but I mean, like a few years ago, if you did the same thing, you'd be like, "Oh man, but how am I gonna? I'm gonna have to retopologize this first of all, right? Like, like let's say half a half a decade or a decade ago, like how would you retopologize this sort of like car man thing, right? And then, yeah. and then the way, like, that would that would be a pain. But by the way, this is like another you know bad pain of older guys. Uh, the the um, um, unwrapping thing, uh, I hated unwrapping in 3ds Max, so I I, I did uh, Archivist, so I didn't have to do it so much. But yeah. I've 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 came out with a lot of ways to texture 
and to map the the objects without unwrapping because it was that tool of unwrapping was uh, and other tools as well. They look like from a from like a different reality, like from 20 years ago, and I didn't know why 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 they were so crude and uh, and but but they uh, got some new features like automatic automatic unwrapping of some parts uh, like stretching yeah. similarly to the to like a piece of garment or you know some cloth uh, and it works like that and when guys who who were unwrapping models for years uh, when they seen it they were like oh my god our all the this all years of learning how to do this ma manually are gone. Of course, they're not gone one one hundred percent, but but yeah, but uh, this is this is another thing that uh, it's um, uh, just you know uh, guys guys uh, when when everything is changing, some of the technical skills are become obsolete. Uh, but it's yeah. it, you know, it's good. Yeah, but uh, just uh, in this topic of <clears throat> of using uh, of tools under your fingertips, sort of, uh, I've just also came across this week uh, the tool. It's been around for some time, I think, but there's a new update of this. Uh, a Go B add-on for Blender, which is, allows you for linking ZBrush. Oh, to ZBrush. Yeah. yeah, ZBrush and Blender, like li linking them together with the Go Z. Uh, feature set for 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 well, I'm not really a ZBrush guy, so probably <clears throat> for all you ZBrush guys, that's more uh, more exciting. But I've seen the demo of it, and it's kind of like really nice, it's smoothly you know importing exporting ob objects straight from ZBrush to Blender and and vice versa. Vice versa. So yeah. so you can kind of smoothly work with the two apps doing the thing that's that goes better in each app and exchange smoothly. So it, yeah. it kind of uh, it kind of um, gives another points of uh, of seriousness to Blender. Like, no, but uh, no, but but then because like uh, Gozi, like ZBrush um, ships with these plugins for 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 other software and it has for a long time like i'm I, i'm pretty sure there i know there's a gozi for maya there's a gozi for uh like modo i think and even in max i think like yeah. i'm pretty sure um but blender hadn't had one and i guess i'm not sure that i think this go B is like a uh someone outside of pixel logic yeah kind yeah, of make, porting it yeah and 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 offering it to the community so uh it but then again, you know, like I think mm, for Blender at least, like personally, like I I I I haven't really um, thought about ZBrush in a in a while because like the the sculpting capabilities are really becoming um, like basically very very like a, a dream to use. Um, and and all that's left now is like poly management, like ridiculous poly management, I'd say. But then again, I don't really sculpt anything like ornate. Like I don't really do any hard surface sculpts either. So, but if like I think if you're really just looking to do like uh, like figures um, or like in, like like um, sort of. Uh, Kit, like actually, if you're willing to like, if if you if you're more on like sculpting like um, uh, characters or or simple or like organic shapes that aren't like that don't like not like uh, like crazy armored up like oryx or whatever like and you just like you just you just want to make like an oryx you know with a loin cloth or something like you could totally I mean you could you could totally do that in Blender now with and and have and not be you know uh held down by like technical or hardware limitations like it's just so optimized and then maybe like you could think about you could sort of have a kit bash approach to like um to you can sort of create primitives and then shape them to like the shape that you want so let's say you have an orc and then you you want to like pad him up with some like shoulder armor, like some pauldrons or whatever. Uh, you could 
you could sort of just it would just take you like to have to create like simple shapes that are low poly and then uh, switch into sculpt mode and use sort of like the dynamic topology to sort of um, like you can add the you can add the polygon density only to areas where you need them. And now there's like a mesh filtering system that sort of kind of helps you unify. Uh, like it just helps you regulate like a lot of like the polygons now without necessarily having to worry about um, creating like a new base mesh over a over an older one just so that you know you know what I mean. Yeah, so but like, I'm, it, but I'm it, just I'm just curious if you know in, uh, considering the the mega grants from Epic and and that the Epic is kind of like friendly. Blender friendly oriented, so I just wonder how how fast this kind of awesome polygon management technology can drip down into Blender some someday maybe. Oh uh, well, there the, the 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 increase like the per, the performance gains per release have been crazy, like 30 percent on average, right? Like I I don't know, don't quote me on that, but it just seems like. It, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised that you know how like that it would it would come really quickly. Um, but I think yeah, okay. So again, uh, gotta gotta sort of circle back to to the non-denominational non-denominational three D discussions. So anyone listening, like sorry, like DJ and I are are like Blender aficionados. Didn't mean to. Well, didn't mean to so, fall so, into that hole, we, yeah, but we so, did again. So, so sorry about that. But <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so, uh, whatever tool you're using, that generally it's all, <clears throat> it's all like all the 3D stuff is kind of like um, similar to some extent. Yeah. It's just it's just yeah. tools. But then, uh, yeah, like kit bashing is kind of like software agnostic. So that you need you need yeah. your your library of assets. You need your yeah your uh, and more, more and more of pipeline of different tools, like like Blender being being trying to be the whole the one tool for all tasks is kind of like it's a it's a nice idea, but then uh, the direction that that the whole thing is going, there are so many of of the of these that you can't really squish them into one app probably. So or general, generally, I... you have to be prepared to that kind of like. Joining and uh, streamlining in different. Or, or there is no point apps. in really joining them if you can d develop them, especially that new techniques emerge, some new, 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 new specializations emerge. Like I don't know, 3D. There was a 3D uh, tracking at some point. It was it wasn't there. Then another one. So yeah, and it's. Uh, they are going to be more flexible and yeah. develop better as long but as, as long, but are. as long you can s smoothly kind of like jump between applications or like export import stuff like using open standards you know this whole uh, yeah. uh, open <clears throat> open vdp stuff open uh, yeah, yeah. scene description so, yeah which universal is really nice. scene description yeah that, these are i think these are good uh, good practices sort of like you can see this in the uh, in the web development, for example, like the standard set up by, yeah, the, the, the HTML, like you, I can recall the e era of, you know, flash paid web pages and stuff. And it kind of became yeah. obsolete right now. And less and less web pages are based on some kind of like external uh, technologies, like closed, closed environments, but just like using open standards that are accessible for everyone. I think that yeah, Flash totally. website, I mean, there were a lot of cool Flash websites. I remember when Flash appeared, but they were not very good in the uh, CO. So the HTML websites, I think, were better in positioning than, than Flash ones. And that's why I think they disappeared. But by, by, by the way, uh, I have a, uh, some cool uh, direction for for you. Uh, on YouTube, you can watch a documentary, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing documentary. I, I don't know oh. if you watched that movie. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of... That was very visual movie, and I loved it. I loved it, and I lo still love it. And 
uh, there was there is that documentary. There's the whole process of creating this 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 monster, which is changing the shapes, and there's yeah. uh, and it's very interesting. I mean, there's that classic classic kid bashing. I mean, uh, there is a lady who shows the 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 spaceship how it was done, like ex exactly with the same techniques as, as Star Wars, but also this movie was like. Uh, it was like a creative explosion because uh, because it was not supposed to be as crazily creative when it comes to the v VFX. The, the the guys who wanted to make this movie they didn't expect that the v v VFX guy or guys will come up with so with so crazy ideas. I mean, like this head. Of a guy detaching and growing legs and then running stuff like that, and also it is very, uh, very um, entertaining documentary, especially the parts where the 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 guys, uh, the guys from the VFX uh, talk. Uh, one of these guys who was very young when he started to to do this, and he basically said that he lived on the uh, on the set. To the point of losing his consciousness, like he blacked out after two weeks of working, like for the whole day. So they were really like, you know, um, very engaged people, very engaged into this, this, this their work. So the documentary is is very, very interesting, and uh, you can see how they created these effects, which. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you can make them on computers today, but uh, or they for me they were mind blowing when I watched that movie the first time, and uh, yeah. and the, the whole idea. I mean, th that was very, very one of the ele elegant films, like elegant image. There is white snow, closed space, ten guys, and one thing in con so so everything is is is, is white and simple. Yeah. And there's that blob of 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 living matter which is changing all the time and doing all this all this stuff and it's it's like like a, a how how to call it it's a, like a short no short short story like okay okay I forgot this word but in general it's a, it's a very very elegant elegant movie. And yeah, and they are talking there about you can see the sketches what they came uh, with because that was a remake of a movie like from sixties which was complete crap, and you know like the monster was a guy in a costume and uh, so so they make a remake and when these guys who made VFX they showed to the director the drawings it was like mm -hmm. how we are going to do this I mean like. You 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 went completely over the top with the idea of this monster, but they also were able to pull it off in in you know in in re reality, not only on the paper. And yeah. so you can so can you can watch it and yeah, I was really I was really uh, into this documentary. I watched the the whole thing; it's very interesting. So you can wow. find it on YouTube. Yeah, rad. Thanks, because like. I mean, speaking of like we were we we were talking about you know, like having the capacity like to kind of assume a directorial role and sort of like, uh, like control everything and uh, one thing like I like the thing is cool for sure, um, but like my favorite John Carpenter film is uh, Escape from New York. <laughs> like, you, you, have you seen that? Like, with, uh, uh, better long time ago. Russell, man, that, that was insane. And you know what? The you know the the cool thing about like John Carpenter is that he he also like he he directs his films, but he also composes the music for his films, which is just amazing. Like I didn't know that, but in the yeah. thing, the music at the end, it was like this, like the ha heartbeat, just like a yeah. slow heartbeat. Uh, uh, that and, and that sort the... of elegance also like that you were talking about like same yeah like like those really nice like choices he makes like he 
like musically like when he does like what he did for for escape from new york is like also the, i could say the same thing um and it's actually a pretty you know like one like um i've always wondered so like to be able to ex- execute something as nuanced as you know like a like an actual film right like requires like a lot of management and a lot of collaboration and so because you're working with all of these different people who are interpreting your your overall vision i mean you you let's say as a director will have a say over what these people need to like what what should be done but but there will always be some sort of compromise right and it's just the way things have been like how how else could you make something like this happen but now like now like there you know there's like this like super super light piece of software you can run you know like on a laptop or whatever and then and then uh like you can practically do everything your yourself like if time wasn't an uh, an issue and i mean uh, like for us you know uh like for everyone who's a like who's who who's got the daily you know who's got like a day job who's working you know like that like maybe that's not as evident but like just think about what some some kid during summer break could do with whatever is available today i mean really right like it's just yeah, it's insane yeah a set stuff appears here and there uh yeah yeah by... yeah like by one dude right or or, or girl or or do that girl do, do that one yeah. yeah one one guy or girl or person one like one human being so it's like you you yeah and and it's it's insane because like the technology is only get, gonna get better i don't know what the new normal is after you know like like if if, if that's really gonna be a thing you know the, the new normal quote unquote but let's assume that like people are going like physical physical proximity is going to be sort of like reduced let's say if 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 that happened i mean so everyone is going to be luck like less likely to go out let's say like let like and i'm i'm like i'm not saying this is what's going to happen but like if we just kind of indulge like things you know like based on what's been going on and like what the what what things might be like from here on out like if everybody let's say that like uh yeah like um people couldn't go out as often um they could still probably go out but maybe not as often or like be in close proximity with a large number of people as often or something and so like there's all of these kids that are just like that stay at home more and have access to all of the software and have access to all of these resources i mean holy shit like what 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 are movies going to be like in the future and can you imagine like it's not i mean it, it's not it's not so far fetched to think that you know like I you could that... be watching a movie like that was made entirely by by one guy which might arguably also be a bad thing depending but it's just so interesting like that's never been done before i think you know like and now it's it's actually a possibility you mean, uh, movie done by one person like where where yeah like where where uh oh uh, let's say okay like let's be of course you can't like unless you're like the only unless you're really good at like prosthetics like what animations know, animations where yeah, animations, you really animations. created some dark I, ro- room by some guy yeah, yeah. no yeah. but but not all, not all of them are like really like these feature films like for example like one, one thing that really moved me in the last days of the animations was this uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. It was kind of like directed by this guy who came up with this whole visual idea and stuff, but he had a whole team working on you know all the things that oh, needed sure. to be created. For sure. So like he yeah. he got, he kind of kid bashed with his crew, right? So they created stuff for him to kid bash the thing into the creation like it, it's kind of uh, it also relates to, to a daily work of i don't know just a regular argvis guy uh, that you it sometimes come up with this question like is it really you know this is it possible to create you know this whole stunning scene from scratch like i've seen a, even a tutorial called making a scene 3d scene from scratch in, i don't know in, in 
3ds max and corona like i, I just scrolled through the video and it was like yeah right making the scene from scratch like modeling the walls adding some lights and, and then just importing models and you know oh. and just laying out the scene and stuff like that the guy didn't really model the whole thing throughout which is a regular thing like in a daily arc this job you just use the use whatever you have or you already modeled before or you just purchased in the uh, as a set of models ready made for you but, well at least this is a kind of like area where where there are there are pre-made assets and you don't really have to like <laughs> think about you know, reusing your your toothbrush to be a spaceship or something like that you know oh. <laughs> like in the old days of kid bashing but uh, yeah just having this whole tool set uh, and using it the creative way allows you to really complete the task, which is creating a, an image that is conveying and uh, yeah. within within some time and within back. within some yeah some specific deadline. That well, I had this kind of experience lately of creating a scene with the 3DB assets, making a kitchen, and yeah, it was it was possible to finish at a satisfactory level in, in short time just because I had the, the whole backup. Yeah. So, because we could models. I guess like and I could focus on yeah, I could focus on the lighting, on the composition, on you know yeah. setting up the whole set and making it uh, the way I want it. And maybe just modeling small small stuff to add a little bit of individual impact also, on the scene. Also I think you know this is um just just as a personal thing for me it's it's okay to use ready, ready-made things. Uh, I mean, this is only my personal approach. If I know that I could do them myself, so for example, let's say that I'm, I want to make a, like a compositing of a tank into a footage, and uh, I could, I can, I can buy <coughs> cheaply models of tanks to animate and and composite in them into the footage. But the first tank I'm, I'm doing myself and animating it. I mean, modeling and, and texturing. Yeah, because, I know what you mean. So I did it. Okay, now I can do all that stuff myself, but it takes it would take me a, long, a lot of time so I can buy those models, put them there, and play on a, another level. I mean, I don't... Of course, I'm not saying that in a professional way, like... That this is approach of a professional person, just my personal approach um, to no, yeah. doing it. it and and that's for, a, it's for a example, approach. yeah, for example, for a very long time, I can model stuff, but there's some stuff that would be very hard for me to model. And I never really like met to the end, to that wall that I, okay, so this, everything I can model and it will look good in, in for example, in interiors. And, uh, and I was, um, and th this is, this is going to, this is going to create a lot of insecurity because you are in such a situation, you are dependent on this, on these assets. So you are not, you know, like, um, uh, you, you are not inviting them to your scene and it, so it's helping you but you're really, really like you know desperately connected to them so yeah. so so yeah it's it's good to use them but uh, you can use them with with even you know like no remorse uh, that somebody did that because you know you could do that just you say but, you are saving yourself yeah but time. then but then again you're using you know the the software the render engine that you really didn't make yeah. yourself anyway so yeah it's no, no like... but i think i think the i think the the heart of it is really more of um the because i yeah that like that's exactly i've been mulling that over for a while also i mean like you could I, like even like if if you were painting like like you could say like oh you know like you like you like you have all of these like automated operations yada yada, yada. like no I'm, I'm you know i'm gonna stick to like the hardcore primal medium of 
of just like a brush and like paint and I'm going to mix my own colors, no color sampling for me. And I'm just going to, you know, but then like if you really wanted, but like you could go one step further and like just actually make make your own paints, like harvest your own pigment, you know, I don't know, like farm a no. bunch of hogs <laughs> so that you can. No, but 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 I, I uh, like I mean, that's the that's the line that I think DJ was kind of going towards. But but yeah. I get what you mean, Andrew, because uh, I think for me it's like it's really about understanding like what your what your purpose is, what your intent is for the time being. Like um, like everybody wants to be good at their three D software. Like everybody wants to be able to have all the skills to be able to really control their tool, and that's cool. Right, so like if you, yeah, I mean, like yeah, you need it, it comes really handy sometimes. Scene. Yeah, so like you need it, not, not always. You want to be dependent easy. on like having to look right. for the right tank. You want to be able to make the right tank yourself. Then, I mean, it's good. Like, like yeah, do it. And then if you can't, if you can't figure out how to do it, um, like you could even just get like your first few tank assets, right. study the topology, and then and then and then create one of your own based on what you've learned from, you know, from from those assets themselves, and then. And then, like, once you've finally, like, acquired that skill, you can, yeah, you can tell yourself, you know, like, yeah, you know, like, I can, I can do this, but I, it's, it would be impractical, so yeah. I would, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, totally. I think it's, yeah. it's totally recommendable to, like, learn modeling, learn, learn the tool sets that you, because it might come handy sometimes, sometimes, you know, I've, I came across these situations and it's, it's kind of, like, happens often that people, waste a lot of energy and time <laughs> into searching for this one particular asset that no oh, yeah probably there is somewhere in the in the deep yeah. deep dungeons of the world wide web there and you can find this particular yeah, asset that you this is not really popular but you really need this for this one scene and it would be really faster to just you know get some nice reference model it yourself your texture yeah, yeah pull up your sleeves and do this one crucial thing and do it yeah. yourself, right? I but... remember w when I wor worked in one Arcvis company, the problem was not with... I mean, the problem was that guys saw somewhere a good model, but they couldn't remember where. So it was like, okay, oh, I no. saw this 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 armchair. the holy grail. Uh, you know, this this exact armchair. I, but I don't remember why, like two <laughs> quid or or ever more. Think, man, or, think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and but they were very good modelers. So very often they just modeled them. They didn't look for them, and they mm. could. It was always a. Uh, it was always a calculation of time and money. Like right. we, we would model yeah. that in twenty minutes. Is it a good deal or not? If it's not, exactly. It's like yeah. We are buying if, especially if we will use it more. Um, if we can quickly model it, we are not buying because this is uh, this is how let's say hour of our work is worth. And uh, if we if the model is is is, is more expensive that than the time of modeling it by ourselves, then we are not buying it. Yeah, right. yeah. And I've, I've seen I've seen a lot of this kind of like searching for assets, and especially if in on SketchUp groups, like when people are kind of like used to using this great repository of of uh, CG uh, like three D warehouse, it's called yeah, right the mm -hmm. the repository for of all the SketchUp, SketchUp. models out there. But uh, then 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 you come up with this whole great vault of you know just every possible model that you can imagine but in every possible level of quality as well so it's mm. so I, i'm sure that it's also nice to have like at least uh you know a set of your just like you have in your maybe photoshop you have just you can have a ton of brushes but then you use probably like five of them or you know or some of your favorites yeah or you have your the like, ones that fit in, into your into your style and stuff. So if you have a nice, nicely composed, you know, library of assets, and the, and that you're sure that they are, you know, enough quality that uh, to fit into your projects, it's also nice to use yeah. that one. So just yeah, just wanted to mention you know the the one that I use <laughs> for the latest project, like the three DB, just to mention it slightly that we have we yeah three DB no, I mean sale right now and. 
Yeah, we're going to save that are... for later on. But yes, we're having, like, 3DB is having a sale. And it's a ridiculously, uh, like, good sale. Um, so, yeah, like, you, you, you could just head over to 3db.it. I mean, it's like it's up to 60% off in terms of assets. And, and they are really good assets. I mean, I, I realize that, like, like like we're we're shamelessly plugging now but i'm very proud of the modelers for the work that they've done like there are a lot of assets and, and just like, just remember when you register use the magic word cg talk podcast and the, and then you'll get just all the regular discounts that everyone else is <laughs> getting because they're already insane but, so. but but you will have our silent appreciation at right. least at least we'll, we'll know that about... that anyone is listening yeah like on a nightly basis, we'll just be like, uh, you know, like, I really hope, like, Shattered Blade 24 is having a really good time right now. So there is no extra thing for, for quoting us? No, except, except, the, <laughs> except the silent appreciation, I guess. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. So you don't have to quote us. Don't quote us. Just, just, just <laughs> check it out and see if you like it. And... Uh, um, I think this is mainly like mainly Max users, yeah. Like you guys are gonna appreciate this a lot because it's because yeah. the app. I mean, if will... you if you if you create something with the assets and you just share it online and you I don't know tag it. Oh yeah, use, use a hashtag three so db whatever. <laughs> just yeah. use or use the CG talks hashtag for example. Use that, guys. Use that. You'll you'll get you get our violent, uh, violent enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. so we'll just come. We'll just and, yeah. We'll just spam maybe, you with with comments saying and maybe good we'll job. Get a or <laughs> no, good kidding. job, and we'll share it everyone everywhere we can. So yeah, in our yeah. in our giant you know, follower groups. Yeah. yeah. By the way, guys, it's if you exposure, what whenever wherever you you found this podcast, I encourage you to comment on it and continue the discussion about things you you've heard all and or all if you have you know like some cool sources like i said this documentary about the thing or or some artists or some programs if you can share them under the podcast it would be great to 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 check on it it's there's it's never uh the, there's never enough of this kind of stuff uh and so, remember, guys, we are sure. we are kind of uh, you know hand direction agnostic. So you can write it, write the comments with your left, your right hand, whatever. <laughs> because I've seen comments, you know, are you know most controversial topic of the left-handed people. I am left-handed. I am left-handed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like left-handed the, be... is that is that you know the military title? Military title. <laughs> Lieutenant? <laughs> Let ah, Lieutenant. <laughs> I think that's the origin. No, no, but yeah, like really, being on, were, being, like, being on the left hand of someone. Yeah, no, don't worry. Like, yeah, we're definitely not like. Uh, 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 gee, I don't know what you'd call it. Fine motor skill, peripheral orientation biased, whatever. Like, we use whatever hand you like. Don't use your hands. Use your face. That's cool too. Like. No, the bias yeah. thing. The bias thing is also dividing dividing the render engine world. So you have the bias and unbiased render engine. Which one is better? <laughs> let's start. Yeah, let's start, let's start with flameware. Now you need to render with unbiased. I mean, bias. It's like eighties. Yeah, but <laughs> but but everyone is using it anyways. So <laughs> some kind of bias, you know. Yeah, I thought that you are. You meant the flame wars of of. Blender and other software users, which it, software is better, and do you have a fight? That's just a spoiler of the next episode. So get ready, get ready, <laughs> train yourself, train your, train your hand muscles for the comments in the flame war. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. I just keep, keep, keep bashing, keep it. Oh, uh, I guess that's almost a wrap. We already passed. An hour and a half, almost. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. An hour, an hour and twenty-four minutes, or something like that. So, I guess we'll be wrapping up. Wrapping. Yeah. Okay. Up this. And we this we kind of like I think. Uh, well, 
it was a good conversation despite the, the even, even if like I don't think we really talked much about kit bashing but you know what we kit we kit bashed several topics yeah. to create this whole thing anyway so that's that's kit bashing for you but uh hope you enjoyed it anyway and uh yeah thanks for dropping by and we'll see you on the next one as always um also please check out 3db.it um it like it it, it the sale is for the rest of May, and it's a really good sale. And I'm not just saying that because we work there. Also, I I I, I ask my left-handed brothers to do that as well. Maybe it it will be easier to take control of the, the world when we when we check out it. <laughs> so see you guys, and take yeah. care, stay safe, and wash both both your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, also. can't be any bias for that. Yeah. Just a second, I'm stopping the recording. Okay. On Skype, also finish the recording.